Hello and welcome to the Women in Fish and Chips vlog. I'm delighted to be joined today by Kelly Barnes, the director of Crispies in Exmouth. Kelly, thank you very much for doing this. Um, for those of you that don't know your business as well, as well as I do, could you please give us a, a little bit more info? So I am the owner and director of Crispies. Uh, we've been in the trade for 22 years. Uh, and we have a takeaway only business uh, and we also have a click and collect and delivery store which we started um, before this crazy new world that we're living in. Oh wow, what, what good timing I suppose. Yes, I think we were very lucky to be in a position when all this started to understand completely how deliveries work to make them slick and also how a click and collect service worked so that the customer was never really waiting and it truly was click and collect as mm. opposed to what we're used to in the industry as you know kind of coming in cooking to order uh, big groups of queues and so we, we were very very lucky what made you decide to introduce click and collect well we it was kind of one of those conversations that you have very late at night um arguing over whose idea it was <laughs> And we always said if it was if it worked, it was my idea. If it didn't, it was Tim's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was uh, we just kind of felt that that's the way the world was going. A click and collect was around anyway. There were there were I think there was probably you know a good handful of shops doing it. But what we felt was important was we had to move with the times as an industry, or we we were going to get left behind. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, how have things been going since the lockdown? Uh, we closed both of our stores, even the click and collect and delivery. Um, and we decided to do that because we felt that that mothering Sunday was a real eye opener. Um, people didn't understand social distancing. They didn't know what it was about. They were, they just weren't, you know, au fait with what was going on really. And I think the, you know, the whole country needed to wake up call. And, and I think it came on that day when, you know, big burger chains started to close their doors. Mm. Um, so personally for us, that was kind of the lead. And I felt, you know, if those guys can't do it safely then who are we to profess that we can um so that was it, it was a really really tough decision and i think a lot of businesses had to make that really really tough call um and you know our business costs us twelve thousand pounds a month to run closed and you know with no income it, we didn't know whether we would come out of it so how have you uh, how have you managed it all um, we've had the leasing companies have been fantastic. Um, they've they've helped massively. They've given us, um, I guess, what you a mortgage holiday on, mm. on our leases. Um, and it, it wasn't uh, it, that it, we're still not out of the water in terms of, you know, they, that money's got to be added on the ends. So you know, who knows what's going to happen? Um, we we applied for a coronavirus business interruption loan. Um, we still haven't had that. Um, you know, and we're nearly two months into the process. Um, so that didn't happen. Um, and it, it's been a rocky road. And we were really, really fortunate. Myself, uh, Tim, my daughter's nearly 18 and my daughter's friend has been living with us and working, well, Meg's been working with us for four years. My daughter's friend's been living with us for, uh, it's got to be a year and a half now. So we were in a really fortunate position that we had four people who could run the business. So two and a half weeks after we closed, we decided enough was enough and we could start deliveries only quite safely. And how's that been going, the deliveries only? Um, we did deliveries only for the first five weeks. So we're eight weeks into lockdown. So yeah, first five weeks, it went really, really well. Uh, we sold out the first day. We'd sold out by the Monday evening pretty much. Um, that was, I think we did 160 orders a day, which it, you know, when we used to do five, 600 orders a day, oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, not that many, but it, it, it was bringing in some, you know, some cash and, and it, and it helped. Um, and we gradually grew that last week, we decided to open both stores for click and collect as well as delivery. Um, that worked well. There's still, I believe quite a lot of people out there that either don't care or, or, or they're ignorant to what's going on i'm not quite sure um but it's been tough even being closed we had 
barriers at the doors and the people we always say in this trade we could write a book about our customers um i think that's even more true now <laughs> um i didn't even see the customers and i could still write a book about them <laughs> and you said that you're opening tomorrow so is that your actual uh, restaurant that's opening what's that yeah we decided to do our click and collect shop and delivery shop at pines road take that back to relative normality in terms of the volume of orders that we can do there mm. uh, with a smaller team and then our main click and collect uh, our main x to road store is just now click and collect and we wanted to do that because as it probably has been for a lot of people these last few weeks it hasn't really been about profit it's been about survival yeah. um, and it's making sure that we can serve as many people as we possibly can safely and i think that's going to be what we look for when we move forward which is why we still have decided no walk-ins and is there anything that you've physically changed with your shops uh we've got big acrylic screens up on our counter um at the main store and we we were we actually preempted that in terms of we we ordered those four or five weeks ago um i was speaking to my signage guys and they've tripled the price of acrylic um yeah he said it's absolutely extortion and so we we had our screens measured four weeks ago and they arrived last wednesday um we temperature check all our staff in the morning um they recommend that you should do it between seven and eight at night but personally for me we've been doing that as well um but we felt that we should do it in the morning because obviously if they're going to be poorly they're going to be poorly then as well uh, and when they've been sat over a fryer for you know, four hours of an evening, they're going to be slightly hotter than 36 degrees. <laughs> um, we, get, we did, you know, risk assessments. We made sure that everything was as it should be. We've ordered hand sanitizer stations for the customer side for when they walk in so that they've got access to hand sanitizer. Um, but as with everything, there's been a huge delay. So we've, we've got bottles dotted around the place at the moment, um, but there's been a huge delay in a lot of things because obviously the whole country's gone... A little bit crazy for hand sanitizer at the moment which is understandable and what's the response been like from your customers about about all these big changes um they've been extremely understanding um it's um we've had to alter our sign um it's become more and more harsh over the last few weeks <laughs> it started out very friendly um with you know i'm really sorry unfortunately but it now just says no walk-ins <laughs> we've had to be very direct and to the point um mm. the customers have been great we've not had any moaning any complaining we've had some amazing feedback thanking us for opening and bringing a slice of normality to what is now a crazy world and i think for us I didn't think we knew the impact we would have when we opened the doors. We just assumed it'd be, you know, we'll do what we can do. And so we were a little bit blown away by it, to be honest. And it, it's been a little bit of a new way of adapting for us, but not too much. Because like I said at the, at the start, we'd already been in that process of delivery and click and collect. Mm -hmm. So we were very conscious of how things worked and how to create, you know, quite a slick operation in terms of those two things. Being ahead of a lot of other shops, uh, is there any advice that you would offer to people? Uh, I, I would say don't, don't do it until you're ready. Don't feel pressured by your customers to do walk-ins. Don't feel pressured by your customers to take cash. Um, I've been speaking to a few people and, and they've said, oh, you know, I live in a, in a poorer area or, you know, and I feel like I need to take cash. I don't think we're living in that world anymore. I think, the, you know, 90... 8% of sales that have probably gone on in this country have all been by card in the last eight weeks. Um, and I do believe that we will become a cashless society at the end of this. Um, whether that's a good thing, I don't know. Um, personally, it makes my life easier. There's no cashing up at the end of the week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, um, but I just think, I think if you're do, do things properly, don't rush it. Don't, if you're not ready, it's okay. If everybody else around you is opening, if you're, if you've got a good, strong brand and you're passionate and, and you, you are, it's in here, no one can take that away. It doesn't matter whether you're, you've got five fish and chips around you. If you know that your fish and chips are amazing, your customers will still be waiting as were. And we, we felt very, very lucky. 
Brilliant. And how about, um, how have you been coping personally with all of this? That's a very interesting question. <laughs> um, not, not as well as I expected. Um, I'm quite a, I like me time anyway, but I'm very much a people person, very much people person. Um, and I've got three pretty much teenagers living in my house. <laughs> um, and, and it's been hard work. I, I mean, I think if I, I'm a bit of a, a glass half full kind of person anyway. So I even said to Tim, you know, we're on reduced hours at the moment. So we work Thursday to Sunday. We have Monday to Wednesday off on a normal day off when the shop is open, we never really truly have a day off. Mm. And what I've learned is actually having Monday to, Monday to Wednesday off, if you like, it's just been really lovely. It's been really nice to spend time with the family. We sit down for meals three times a week and you, you will never get that back. So, um, I think from a family point of view, that's been lovely. Um, from a personal mental health point of view, I've had some pretty down days, but I think the whole, I have to keep bringing back to myself. My sister works in a hospital in, in Burton on Trent and she's on the COVID ward. She's a ward clerk. And I just have to keep bringing myself back to I'm serving fish and chips and doing, getting to do the job that I love on a daily basis. And that's all that matters. So when I'm having a rubbish day, it's nothing compared to what everyone else is going through. So that's how I deal with it what one thing has helped you to get through <laughs> apart from prosecco um, <laughs> that's okay um, reading and just uh, uh taking time out i've actually i only ever normally read when i'm on holiday um and i've actually read a couple of books and it's been really lovely so that's been nice for me to actually i love reading it's a real passion of mine and it's been nice to be able to do that on my days off mm. Okay, so um, the last question is, we're starting to see a lot more shops opening now. Um, where, where do you think the fish and chip shop sector will be and the wider hospitality industry at the end of this year? Oh, that's a really tough question. I do believe that fish and chips will come out of this even stronger. Um, I think that there will be a few shops, unfortunately, that, that will, you know, sort of become a victim to, to this, this crisis that's going on. Um, but I think the good, strong shops will, will come out of it in a, in, with a new way of doing business. Um, personally, I think Click and Collect is around to stay. I don't think it's going anywhere, even when coronavirus is gone and we're on that level one that, that Boris talks about. I do believe that, that Click and Collect will be around to stay. I think it will be ease for people. And I think they will really enjoy that convenience and not having to queue and... Um, I think for the wider hospitality industry, that's, that's different. I, I think there might be a lot more casualties. Um, a friend of mine is a manager of a hotel um, in Exeter. They, they're a big group of hotels and they're not opening until the end of July. Um, I think they've started to open one for key workers. But I just think that it's going to be extremely di difficult for those guys to recover. Um, you know, when, when these people open restaurants and they've got, you know, a certain amount of covers per head to, mm. to make a profit, it's going to be extremely difficult for them. And no, I'll, I'll just thank you again, Kelly Barnes. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Some really great advice out there. Uh, and good luck with your opening tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you.